Hey what's up guys, it is the Turkish version of Saiku here and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to talk about level designing tips and tricks for specifically UE4. And guys if you enjoyed the video make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below and also hit subscribe to make sure that you stay up to date for new videos coming soon. Turn on those notifications so that you get notified as soon as I upload a video. Also leave a comment down below stating what you think of these tips and if you have your own tips and tricks for UE4 level designing. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, so as we said before, we're going to talk about level designing in UE4 and I just want to begin with saying that level designing is indeed hard and it is especially hard in UE4 since it's such a complex engine to use. And I'll be honest with you guys, like I was having a difficult time even though I was experienced from being a level designer in Unity because of my YouTube channel obviously, but I was still having some trouble in UE4 because I thought that it was very difficult at first, but when I got started with it, I really did think that it was almost easier than Unity, to be honest. And in this video, I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks on what kind of points and factors you might wanna focus on to if you're new especially, but also a advanced user of UE4 so that you can get your levels to become even better. First and foremost, let's get a basic thing out of the way because I was having some trouble with this when I was new to UE4 because I wasn't used to this from Unity, like from using Unity so long. And all the rushes can be increasing in size more than their maximum in UE4. And that goes especially good for terrain painting, you know, whatever it might be, like sculpting the terrain, vegetation, I mean literally everything. Like the, the brushes, when you click on the on the number that where you can actually edit the float value to how big the brush is, you can edit that out of its maximum, which is the slider itself. And that was such a game changer when I was new to UE4, or, or like when I actually learned that that feature existed, because it was so good. Like sculpting the terrains, it might feel like, because the UE4 terrains you create are especially big, and when you actually edit them and sculpt them, it's going to be a little bit difficult when you're actually just working with a small, small brush, because you obviously want to be able to edit a lot of different, like a huge chunk of the part, or the map uh, at the same time and I just want to mention like you can use it to use this feature to make sure that you you know just click once and your terrain rises up in in size but depending on how big you make the brush and how big part of the terrain you're actually increasing in size or or like height or whatever it might be it is going to lag a little bit so you just have to be aware of that so if you have a dense scene already and you want to use this feature make sure to save first so that if it crashes for some reason because you're you're like increasing the height of a big big chunk of the of the terrain that it makes your computer crash or whatever it might be make sure that you have a save and a backup first and foremost at number two guys we're gonna talk a little bit about the density when painting grasses onto your landscape so if you have your landscape ready and you want to use multiple types of grass or vegetation in general for your landscape to place down you might want to be a little bit careful with the density because the density you know at first when you like paint down let's say 2000 instances of the grass it's not going to be that bad but when you use it for a huge map with different types of you know grasses multiple grasses and vegetations with the same amount of instances or density it is going to lag so make sure to be careful about that and always save your scenes like this is this should be a topic itself and my technique of or like a workaround for this was the fact that I used if I were going to use like multiple grasses or vegetations for for a huge part of the map that I'm creating for my YouTube channel or whatever I I usually like if I have two different grasses, I just say, okay, so if I want to use, if I say that the density is 600 for, or like 300 for, for this grass is good enough for the map that it looks, you know, quite filled up, then I go, okay, so I'm going to have two different grasses, so I can just have that amount and have it like, 151 and 150 other grass that I want to place down. That way, I make sure that I don't overuse the grass so that it doesn't look like it's not going to hurt the player's eyes because if you use it, if you overuse it, it's just going to look ugly. So what I mean is that you want to make sure that your terrain is also visible through the grass. You don't want the grass to be a cover up for the entirety of the map. You just want it to be there. And by using this technique, you're going to be able to optimize your scenes a lot better. And it's also going to look better. Number three, guys, don't be afraid of adding some motion to your scene. Winds and animations, you know, blueprints will guide you using animations quickly. Winds are a very good way they are going to be added pre-added 
is pretty much better word and animations can be added by yourself and it's a little bit scary to animate in uv4 at first if you're especially if you're like used to it from unity but it is pretty much the same thing like it's only the, the only different thing pretty much is the is the basic ui like the starting ui and when you get that going you're gonna get used to it very quickly also using this is funny coming from me because i hate blueprints actually like using blueprints instead of coding is pretty much not my thing i'm i'm gonna be a little bit biased here but i use blueprints to play animations because it's so 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 simple Ow, I just punched my keyboard. <laughs> but really, like, you just add a module for the game starting, which is actually pre-added now that I remember with the latest version of UE4. And then you just add a module for, you highlight the, like, the Matini editor or whatever it was called, the animation itself, right? The animation file. And then you just say, create a reference to this, and then you drag start game to that Matini editor or whatever module that you reference to, and it's done. It's going to play it. It's so simple. So make sure to use Blueprints guys they are very simple when you want to play some animations for your scenes and add some animations to make sure that you have some motion in your scenes so that it doesn't really look dead even if you have like a very good castle or whatever you don't want it to look like a picture probably you want it to look like a living scene next up guys paint vegetation on your hills etc to make it look like you have aggressive terrain right there and use this method to make your props even more dense like look better depending on your game style if you have like a post-apocalyptic scene or a level you might want to use some grasses on these like cars etc you place down some roads and with the fact that you can actually paint some grasses and vegetation other types of vegetation as well onto your props in ue4 it's incredibly simple to use it speaking of a little bit of visual quality you should also edit the default image effects in the rendering settings to make them suit your scene i've seen a lot of people that are ignoring them because they are there are normal image effects etc which isn't wrong like the the mental Mentality is right because you want to be able to focus on the actual image effects that you're going to add to your scene after hand but you also want to make sure that the regular ones the default ones that are added by UE4 aren't perfect and you want to be able to work on them so that you actually make them work even better with your scene because for me for example editing the shadow distance settings etc the shadow quality anti-aliasing especially the the mode for anti-aliasing you can change all of these settings inside of your rendering quality settings and they're incredible like use them to make sure that your scene looks even better with the regular image effects you add by by yourself and one thing that might be very basic and really like a beginner tip which I'm fine with don't forget to add a skybox to your scene to add some ambient lighting to your scene and here comes the a little bit more advanced part which is still a little bit simple too and decrease the intensity of your skybox to give off a more realistic look. Because when you add a skybox to your scene, it immediately comes by default with an integer value of 1. And I've seen so many developers, so many people, designers, whatnot, that are just keeping this value without changing it. And it's hurting your eyes when you look at the scene because it doesn't look realistic. It just looks way too bright with the light intensity mixed up with the ambient light. So why are you doing this to your scene? Just decrease the value and focus on actually finding a spot where it really fits with your scene. And the same thing goes for the color value for both the lighting itself, like the duration lights, but also for the skybox. When people add them, they just don't want to care about playing around with the lights because they think, oh, okay, if I just change the skybox light or the skybox sun horizontal or vertical alignment, it's going to change the colors by the sky and the light intensity. It doesn't work that way. Like, it, it does change it for a for to an extent but it doesn't do it automatically for you ue4 does a lot of things by automatic for you for your scene to become better but it's not going to make sure that your scene is perfect if you want it to become perfect you need to put some effort into it because at the end of the day there is no perfect tutorial perfect guide or perfect per automatic system by ue4 that's going to make the perfect scene for you it really comes off of your taste and last but not least for this video guys i was having some trouble when i got when i was new to ue4 i was having some trouble with adding landscape materials landscape textures so that i could paint them and then i realized a little bit later a little in quotation marks um that there are actually materials which contain texture packs for your landscape grounds in the most most of the assets that you buy and get for free off of the marketplace or 
even UE4's Epic Games launcher. So if you're using one of these assets and you know that the asset has one, or if you don't know, just search for it. If you know that it has one and you see that it has one, make sure to add it to your scene because it's going to it's going to save some time and you're also going to gain inspiration for the values you want to use in your own material if you're creating one. Or else you could just go with the one that is given by the asset itself. And usually these type of like landscape material packs are located in, either in the demo scenes folder from what I've seen at least. Like I don't wanna I don't wanna speculate regarding what assets you're using for because I don't want to put your expectations too high in false hope and I've been using a lot of assets in UE4 and I got a lot of assets and most of them used to have it in their demo scenes they were called like ground landscape or ground layer or whatever like something with the ground to do and with that being said guys we are going to end this video off here and I want to thank you so much for watching this video I hope you all enjoyed your time and I hope you made it here actually <laughs> um, I was a little bit tired today and I'm not gonna blame it on anything like I did work but I'm not gonna blame it on that I still I still could be a little bit more like down to earth I guess but anyway I hope you all enjoyed your times if you have any feedback for me to get better as a level designer youtuber you know whatever it might be especially a youtuber because I'm really taking this seriously nowadays um, make sure to leave a comment down below and even if you don't have any feedback we are a community so just leave your comments like literally anything if you have your tips on level designing if you're seeking for tips if you need some further help regarding this video leave your comments we are always going to respond and once again i hope you enjoyed the video in general if you did make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below to leave a like and show some support on the video make sure to subscribe so that you stay up to tune for new videos coming soon you can also follow me on twitter at psycho sam the link will be in the description down below sponsorship hype boys and with that being said guys i will catch you in the comments see you there bye bye